I quit my $275,000 year tech job. Yes, the job was good. Yes, the money was great. And yes, I could have gotten paid even more. But as you'll soon find out, I still dropped it all and said, I gotta go. I'm making this video for anybody who was in the same position that I was in when the thought of quitting my high paying tech job first crossed my mind. If this sounds like you, you're not alone and it's okay to quit. And for those who have yet to get their first 100K plus year tech job, take this video as a a reminder that sometimes money does not justify sticking around. Odds are you might get put in the same position that I was in in your tech career. You might end up landing that tech job that you always wanted only to realize that it's just a pair of golden handcuffs. So stick around. I'm going to give you the full rundown of why I quit. If you've been following me on social media for a while, you know that I do not get personal. And in this video, I'm going to get very personal and share details about my life that I've never shared on social media before. For. But if you don't know who I am, let me first get into why I took this job and how I landed a $275,000 year tech job in the first place. Jobs like this come around once every blue moon, so I had to take advantage of it. I got referred this job from one of my friends who was a staff member inside of my community. So he told me about this job and let me know that it was 100% remote. It was a job for a GovTech cybersecurity startup. They gave equity. They gave bonuses and they had an extremely high base salary so it seemed like the perfect job for me and something that I had always been looking for. I've been working in the GovTech industry my entire life literally since I was 16 years old and I had never heard of GovTech startups so when my friend told me about this startup and how they were paying a super high salary and they were given equity I felt like I finally hit the jackpot. So here's a rundown of the pay structure. My base salary was 175 thousand dollars a year I had a 10% yearly bonus I also was able to get equity in the company as well this is a pre IPO company and it was already considered a unicorn company and they focused on cybersecurity in a niche that was really in high demand and a niche that was a part of the Gartner hype cycle so I figured that this company was a great opportunity for me to come in get some shares and get equity in a company that was planning to IPO soon on top of all of that the role was 100% remote so for this to be a GovTech role and it's 100% remote and with everything all in together it was coming out around $275,000 a year salary I felt like I couldn't beat this it literally had it all it also had amazing benefits as well healthcare was completely free as a single person we were able to get our cell phone taken care of our internet taken care of we got brand new MacBook computers literally anything that you could think of they had it at this company with this role so it was so much flexibility and a great opportunity so I had to jump on it while working at the company I was able to work with a lot of different government agencies I had great customers I had so much experience working at this company where I was able to come in and learn their product inside and out work with the best government agencies that you could think of and even go to different conferences where I could learn even more about cyber security and also meet with my teammates as well so we would have in-person company retreats and some of them would even be overseas it was just so much opportunity and so many good things about this company I really couldn't complain whatsoever on top of that my team was full of amazing people everybody had a different experience but everybody was extremely nice and they were all willing to help you to learn new things while I was at the company I was actually cross training to become a sales engineer at the company as well. So that was actually my next move. I had the opportunity to make around $500,000 a year as a sales engineer at this company. So I figured it could not get any better than this. This role was unlike any other role that I ever had before. I was finally on the tech sales side in the government technology sector. This is what I always had dreamed of. My title while working for this company was Senior Federal Technical Account Manager, also known as a TAM. And TAM roles are fairly new within the past 10 years. So to get into these roles, you have to have a great technical expertise on whatever the product is that the company is selling to other either government customers or government agencies or government contractors. You have to be able to be very knowledgeable on it. And it's a customer facing role. So you have to be able to get along with the customer and be able to be that person that is building a relationship with them, making sure that they're happy with the product and making sure that they 
they renew and continue to buy the product year after year. So for me, I'm somebody who loves talking, as you can see. So I felt like this was a perfect way for me to eventually segue into a sales engineer role. While I was at the company, we even hosted our first conference. This was for all of our federal customers. So we held this conference at the Ronald Reagan building in DC. I was able to meet the CEO of the company and he even shouted me out to the entire company at one of our all hands on meetings. So everything was amazing. But even though everything was going great at the company, I had a lot of personal things going on that I never really talked about that made it very hard for me to continue to show up and do a good job at work. I started working at this company in August 2022 and by December 2022 I had to have a major surgery. After having this surgery I had to be on bed rest for about two months and I couldn't go to the gym for six months so that played a lot into my mental health at the time and throughout this six months while I was recovering from this surgery my grandmother ended up passing away. So while I'm going through recovery process my grandmother passes away. I'm trying to take care of myself and my family going back and forth between Atlanta to Virginia trying to make sure that everything was holding together so that we could continue to move forward as a family. On my mom's side of the family we have a very small family and it's just five of us so losing my grandmother was a lot so having to go through that process of losing my grandmother and trying to deal with that grief and just trying to also be there for work and for my customers it became very difficult. There would be days where I'm at home grieving and literally crying all day and I still have to show up for my customers, get on the calls, do different deployments and upgrades and checking in on them, making sure everything is good for them. But at the same time, I wasn't okay. And I feel like this is something that isn't talked about much when it comes to remote work, having to deal with things going on in your personal life, you're working at home, you're at home going through things in your personal life and you can't really get a break from anything any of it. So there's really no way for you to escape what's going on in your life because you are working at home eight hours a day and then you're at home for the rest of the day as well. So you're literally just sitting in your emotions trying to process everything and still show up and perform 100% at work. So while I was trying to work through everything that was going on in my personal life, it really just felt like I was trapped in my own emotions. I wasn't able to process everything that was going on, especially because I had to continue to show up at work work and be my full regular self even though inside it was not that way. Inside I was really struggling trying to keep up with everything. As people know I make social media videos too so I took a very long break from making social media videos. Most people didn't realize it but some people they noticed that I stopped making these videos for the Project 50 series that I was doing. So I took a long break from making social media content and I also wanted to take a break from work as well. Well. While going through the healing process of my surgery and grieving my grandmother, I then started going through the process of a divorce. Going through a divorce isn't easy. At the time, I felt like this was a major failure in my life and I don't handle failure very well. And when you go through a divorce, it's not an overnight thing. So it takes months. So it's months of back and forth of legal battles, months of back and forth of who's going to do what, who gets what, who is responsible for the divorce. It's just a lot of arguments and I'm not an argumentative type of person. I'm really a laid back, relaxed person. So going through a divorce on top of grieving my grandmother was just too much for me to handle. So I had these three major things that I was dealing with all at the same time. And at some point, enough is enough. I can only take but so much. And I was not able to show up for work, show up on social media and still show up for myself. So I figured it was time for me to try to take a vacation. I wanted to take a four month month vacation from my job and as anybody knows I can't really take a four month vacation if I'm in a customer facing role and I hadn't been at the company for a year yet to try to do any long-term sabbatical or any type of mental health break so I talked to my manager let her know what was going on she told me to take days off as I needed them but I really needed at least four months off I wanted to take off the rest of 2023 around the time that I started thinking about this vacation that I needed so I could actually take a mental break and focus on myself there was an opportunity for a sales engineer role that became available and I would have gotten paid a half a million dollars if I stuck around for it but I had to prioritize my mental health and I had to prioritize everything that was going on in my personal life before I could try to show 
show up and be a sales engineer because that is even more of a customer facing role. And I prefer sales engineering over a TAM role just because at that company, as a TAM, we did not get any commissions. So since we didn't get commissions, we did not get those large checks like the sales engineers got. Even though I personally believe that TAMs should get paid a commission because we are a big reason why the customers end up renewing year after year. We're showing up, working with the customers on a weekly basis. I felt like we should get commission. So if I was working this hard, I figured I'd rather be a sales engineer and make the big bucks. Why would I not want to get paid half a million dollars to do proof of concepts and demos and go out and meet customers at different conferences? That's something that fits better with my personality, but they wouldn't let me go for the role because I hadn't been at the company for 12 months yet. Since quitting my job, I have prioritized mental health and I've been going to a therapist every single week. She's been helping me process all of these emotions and everything that I go through because I have a lot of stress in my life. I have to be able to have some type of outlet and somebody who can help me with all of the things that I'm going through. I've also been able to prioritize having more fun instead of working all day long because working at my job and making content and helping other people get into six-figure tech roles is an all-day job in itself. So there would be many days where I would be working 18 to 19 hours a day working my full-time job and helping out others get into tech. So now I'm able to manage my time better and I'm finally going after the dreams that I've always wanted to go after. I'm building a government contractor company with my dad and we are going to be going after government contracts. So I'm extremely excited to be able to do this with him because he has a lot of government tech experience. He has a lot of context in the government technology space and he's a disabled vet. So that's going to allow us to get more opportunities while we're going after these contracts. So instead of me focusing on being a sales engineer and making money for somebody else's company, I can focus on doing those same sales engineer tasks and do them for my own company. Why make millions for somebody else when I can do it for myself? When you get to the point of working in the GovTech space and when you've been in this space for at least 10 years, most people end up cutting out the middleman and the middleman is when you work for a government contractor company and they're getting paid three times what you're getting paid from your company. You can cut them out completely and start getting your own government contracts and putting all of that money into your own pocket. On top of building the government contracting company with my dad, I also have more time to spend on brand deals as well. I work with different Fortune 500 companies like Microsoft, AWS, ServiceNow, so many different companies that I've worked with over the past year. And now I'm making 30 to $50,000 a month making this tech content for these brands. So instead of me being stressed out trying to work my job and do these brand deals, now I can focus more on doing the brand deals and running my own company. I'm also building the biggest GovTech educational company out there with the goal of training a thousand people and helping them get into GovTech by the year 2025. I've helped hundreds of people get into GovTech and make six figures already. I figured that I might as well go all in on this and help as many people as possible. The work that I'm doing educating people and helping them get into GovTech is also allowing me to do enterprise educational deals as well. So I'm helping different enterprise companies build their learning curriculum to help their employees get into GovTech as well. So this is something that I'm extremely passionate about and I'm extremely grateful to be able to help so many people and now help different companies as well train their employees get into the GovTech industry. To top it all off, I'm holding a major GovTech conference in DC next year that I cannot wait to share with you all. This conference is going to have 2,000 people in attendance and I am going to be focusing on the technical side of getting into GovTech and focusing on the career side as well. So if you come to this conference, you'll get a real tech conference experience and not just one big party. Partying is cool, but it's really about helping people get jobs in the GovTech industry. So I can't wait to share more details about this, but if you are interested in coming to the conference, make sure that you click on the link below in the description to join the wait list to learn more about this conference that's happening in 2024 in DC. Since quitting my job and being able to take a mental break, I've been able to go on vacation and completely reset. I've thought of so many new ideas and I can't wait to share these projects with you all. I know that these projects that I'm working on is going to help change so many people's lives. So this is really why I've been able to focus and do more things since I was able to 
to quit my job. Being able to mentally reset and take that time off is something that you 100% need to do. If you know that you're getting to the point where you mentally can't handle all the things that are going on, if your job won't allow you to take that mental break that you need, then you just need to decide and make a decision and take that break yourself. If I hadn't quit my $275,000 a year tech job, I wouldn't even be inspired to make these YouTube videos. Being on YouTube and sharing this information with more people is something that I've been wanting to do for at least three years now. You can go and check and see that I've had this channel for a while, but I've never had the time or the inspiration to be able to commit to sharing this information on YouTube. Looking back on it, leaving my $275,000 a year tech job was the right move. Matter of fact, I should have quit sooner. That way I could have started building my government contractor company with my dad faster. I could have started planning my GovTech conference faster. And I could have started building my GovTech educational company that would help people land jobs that they would never ever consider quitting. Because they're easy to get relative to other tech industries. Most of the jobs pay six figures and best Best of all, they're completely layoff proof. If that sounds like a job that you'd like to have, click the link in the description to learn more about my program where I walk you through step by step and show you exactly how you can land a GovTech job in 90 days. And when I say every step, I mean it. I show you how you can get sponsored for government security clearances, the certifications that you need, how you can hack the hiring process, and how you can get away with paying almost no taxes legally. We don't even begin at step one. We start at step zero for those who need it. So click the link in the description to get started. So if you want to see more videos where you can learn how to land a job in the most untapped tech industry on earth, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.